What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network here for a reading of the Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter. Thank you very much to all these principals and associates, as well as the founding sponsors of this great open source organization. Today, newsletter number 53 on July 3rd, 2019. This week's newsletter announces the newest release of C Lightning, briefly describes several proposals related to Lightning Network, and provides our usual section about BEC32's sending support and notable changes to popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items, none this week. Dashboard items, mempool variability. Over the past week, the mempool tracked by various nodes has varied in size from almost 100,000 transactions to fewer than 1,000 transactions. Because most fee estimation algorithms lag behind changes in mempool state, high variability in mempool size may create more such stuck transactions and overpaying transactions than normal. High frequency spenders such as exchanges may want to monitor the mempool state themselves, for example using Bitcoin Core's Get Mempool Info RPC, in order to tweak their fee rate for the current mempool conditions. News. Lightning Network 0.70 beta is released. This new major version of the first is the first to contain a watchtower implementation that allows third parties to help defend the in-channel funds of offline users. Also included are bug fixes, improvements to the API for payment tracking, and faster initial syncs. Upgrading is recommended. This C Lightning version 0.1 0.7.1 is released, and this new version contains new plugins and RPCs, as well as numerous improvements to its handling of channel gossiping protocol to reduce the use of memory and bandwidth. Upgrading is again recommended. Stuckless payments. Hiroki Kondo proposed an alternative way to route payments across Lightning Network channels with a two-step protocol for releasing payments. In the first phase, money is transferred using HTLCs locked to a pre-image not known to the receiver. When the receiver acknowledges that the money is available, the spender releases the information necessary for the receiver to claim that money. The advantage of this method is that it allows the spender to prevent a payment from succeeding up until the last moment allowing them to unilaterally cancel stuck payments or even try sending the same payment over multiple routes simultaneously to see which succeeds the fastest before canceling the slower payments. The proposal would require substantial revision of the current Lightning Network protocol, so it's something developers will need to consider for future upgrades. Standardizing atomic data delivery following Lightning Network payments. Nadav Cohen posted a proposal to the Lightning Dev mailing list for a standardized way to deliver data paid for via Lightning Network, the same method already used on Alex Brosware's YALT's site. Data would be encrypted by a payment request's pre-image so that the encrypted data could be given to the buyer before any payment was made. The buyer could then send a payment. The merchant would accept that payment by releasing the pre-image, and the buyer would then use that pre-image to decrypt the data. The system still requires the buyer to trust the merchant, as the merchant could deliver encrypted junk instead of the actual data. For example, this protocol is not trustless like a zero-knowledge contingent payment. But the, proposal, the proposed protocol can allow the buyer to begin downloading data while the payment is still being processed. Lightning Loop supports users loop in. As described in newsletter 39, Lightning Loop uses submarine swaps to allow a user to exchange Bitcoins in an off-chain Lightning Network payment channel for Bitcoins in a normal on-chain transaction called a loop out. This is done without opening or closing any channels. An update to the system now allows users to do the opposite. Exchange Bitcoins in a regular on-chain UTXO for Bitcoins in one of their Lightning Network channels, called a looped in. Both loop in and loop out are trustless except for the need for one party to pay a transaction fee if the other party backs out of the swap. With the new loop in feature, Lightning Network users can conveniently refill their exhausted Lightning Network channels without using a custodial service. The loop software is compatible with the recent versions of LND. 
BEC32 sending support. Week 16 of 24 in a series about allowing the people you pay to access all of SACWIT's multiple benefits. Recently, an Optech contributor surveyed many popular wallets and Bitcoin exchanges to see what technical features they support. For one of the exchanges, he initially recorded it is it as supporting sending to BEC32 addresses, but later he discovered its support was not entirely complete. The problem was that the exchange supported paid-to-witness public key hash BEC32 addresses, single SIG addresses, but not paid-to-witness script hash BEC32 addresses, multi-SIG and complex script addresses. Another problem was accepting all lowercase BEC32 addresses, but not all uppercase BEC32 addresses. A different exchange limited the length of addresses from fields so that they could not fill all valid BEC32 addresses. With this problem in mind, with these problems in mind, we've created a short checklist for testing basic BEC32 sending support. Only perform these tests with small amounts of Bitcoin that you can actually afford to lose if something goes wrong. 1. Generate two addresses of your own. One for pay to witness public key hash and one for pay to witness script hash. For example, using Bitcoin Core, the JQ JSON parser, and the bash shell, you can run the following commands. Pay to witness public key hash is the Bitcoin CLI get new raw transaction BEC32 test BEC32. And pay to witness script hash would then be Bitcoin CLI add multi sig address one, uh, where you get, uh, where you then get this address info and this pay to witness public key hash and then to echo both the witness public key hash and the pay to witness script hash. Test sending Bitcoin to each lowercase address using your software's or service usual spending or withdrawal forms. Three, test again with the uppercase form of each address. These are useful for QR codes. Four, Ensure that you receive the funds by checking either the wallet you use to create the address or a block explorer. If that worked, your software fully supports current BEC32 spending addresses. If you create addresses using a temporary Bitcoin Core wallet, you can wait for the transactions to confirm and then send all the money to your regular wallet using the following command. Bitcoin CLI is sent to address with your address and then Bitcoin CLI get balance. Uh, as true. For unit tests where you don't actually attempt to send money, or for integration tests where you send money on testnet, or in rec tests, regression testing mode, BIP173 provides a more comprehensive set of test vectors. Notable code and documentation changes this week in Bitcoin Core, LND, C Lightning, Eclair, Lipsec P256K1, and the Bitcoin improvement proposals. This LND, this C Lightning change disables the list transaction RPC described in code changes section of newsletter 51. That RPC currently has several issues open, so it was disabled for the 0.7.1 release. Developers plan to re enable it shortly after the release. And this eclair change adds a balance method that prints the balance of each channel. Peers, you gotta subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. Thank you again to all the founding sponsors, principals, and associates of this great open source organization. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you very much also to all your contributions on the Telecom. Peers, see you on the next show. Bye bye.